insulin synthesis. In pancreas, island of Langerhorn has three kind of cells, beta, alpha and delta. Beta cells which are in the middle make insulin. Alpha cells which are on the sides of beta cell make glucagon, which can be used to break down glycogen to get some energy when there is no food available. Delta cells are all over the place between beta and alpha cells and make somatostatin, which is a natural inhibitor of beta and alpha cells. Insulin consists of pre-signaling segment, A-peptide and B-peptide part, which are attached with two disulfide bonds and C-peptide portion. Insulin synthesis starts from the short arm of 11th chromosome where there is a gene for insulin. Transcription happens and messenger RNA gets out and binds with cytosolic ribosome. Translation happens and signal sequence of insulin is being created. Signal sequence drags the messenger RNA and ribosome to rough endoplasmic reticulum. More signal sequence is being created and penetrates in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Endopeptidase cuts the pre-segment and proinsulin with peptide bond is left behind, which goes into the side of endoplasmic reticulum and make vesicles. These vesicles bud off and go to the Golgi apparatus. Another peptidase attack on insulin and breaks it into the insulin active and C portion and store them in the vesicles in the equimolar amount. This active insulin is attached with a zinc molecule, so there will be six active insulin with one zinc molecule. These vesicles bud off from the Golgi bodies and wait for the signal to come to dump it in the blood and the signal is high blood sugar. When we eat food, blood glucose level goes high. This glucose in blood comes to pancreas and hit beta cell. Beta cells have two passed glut glucose transport two-way valves. As soon as glucose strike on them, they move inward and move the glucose inside. Beta cells are also present in liver, intestine, and kidneys. When glucose comes in, glucokinase enzyme phosphorylase it and makes it glucose 6-phosphate. Now the glucose cannot go back out. Through glycolysis, pyruvic acid happens. Pyruvic acid goes into mitochondria where TCA cycle happens and oxidative phosphorylation happens. Eventually converts ADP into ATP. Beta cell membrane has minus 70 millivolt at resting. It has some potassium channel which are open by default. These channels are ATP sensitive. When ATP goes high, potassium channel gets closed and cell gets depolarized because it has more potassium. Now calcium channel opens and calcium comes in and kicks out the vesicles contains active insulin with zinc. These vesicles also contain C-peptide, some amylin and some proinsulin. If glucokinase is not working, it's called moody, M-O-D-Y, moody disease, which happens when we are young. Sulfonylureas and megalitonides can be used for hyperglycemia to close potassium channel artificially and stimulate the calcium channel to be open and insulin will go out. If beta cell develop insulinoma and more than needed insulin is getting dumped, we can use diazoxide to keep the potassium channel open. Diazoxide are also called vasodilators like dioban. If glucokinase is not working, it's called Moody disease, which happens when we are young. Sulfonylurea and megalitonides can be used for hyperglycemia to close the potassium channel and artificially stimulate the calcium channel to open and insulin will go out. If beta cell develop insulinoma and more than needed insulin is getting dumped, we can use diazoxide to keep the potassium channel open. Diazoxides are vasodilators like dioban. Glucose, amino acids like arginine and lysine and ketones all can stimulate beta cells to make insulin. Diazoxide keep the smooth muscle's potassium channel open and calcium cannot come inside the muscle and muscle cannot contract and that's why veins are kept dilated and BP goes down. 
In creatins, which is a group of enzymes are produced from the GI epithelial cell when we eat food. In creatin makes insulin production goes high, inhibit glucagon production, GI emptiness goes down and affects on hypothalamus to feel satisfied. In creatin has many enzymes. One of them is GLP-1, means glucagon-like peptide 1, makes insulin production goes high. Another enzyme is GIP, means gastric inhibitory peptide. DPP-4, dipeptidyl peptidase 4, makes GLP-1 and GIP life shorter, so we can use synthetic GLP-1, which is exenatide. Exenatide is like GLP, but molecularly a little different, so DPP-4 cannot destroy it. Or we can use cetagliptin to stop DPP-4 function and let the GIP and GLP-1 thrive. Glucagon from alpha cells can also stimulate insulin secretion. Glucagon will stick to its 7 pass receptor that will stimulate intercellular G production which activates adenylyne cyclase and which will convert ADP into cyclic AMP. And increasing cyclic AMP level will stimulate insulin production. The cyclic AMP was also increased by GLP-1 and GIP to produce insulin. If patient has glucagonoma, the alpha cells will keep stimulating beta cells and beta cells will get exhausted and result in type 2 diabetes. If patient has cushion syndrome, cortisol level will be high. This will lead to gluconeogenesis and the uptake will be decreased by peripheral tissues, resulting in hyperglycemia and insulin production and then beta cell will get tired and will have type 2 diabetes. If patient has more growth hormones, more gluconeogenesis will occur. Glucose production from the liver will be more and blood glucose level will become high. And because growth hormone inhibit the uptake of glucose by peripheral tissues, which will result in chronic hyperglycemia and lead to stimulate beta cell to produce more insulin. Beta cell will get tired and we will have type 2 diabetes. Nervous system has two subsystems, sympathetic nervous system, which is activated when there is a crisis, and parasympathetic nervous system, which is activated when we eat food. In parasympathetic nervous system, vagus nerve or 10th cranial nerve release acetylcholine, which stimulates collagenic receptor cells on beta cells, leads to insulin production. In sympathetic nervous system, which is activated when we are stressed, we need less insulin production, so we have more glucose to burn. From nerve endings, norepinephrine is produced, binds on alpha-2 adrenergic receptors on beta cell, which stimulates G inhibitory proteins, which inhibits adenyl cyclase. ATP to cyclic AMP conversion will be less, and less insulin will be secreted. Epinephrine from adrenal medulla binds on beta-2 adrenergic receptors on the beta cells, which increases cyclic AMP and result into more insulin production. Epinephrine from adrenal medulla binds on beta-2 adrenergic receptors on beta cells, which increases cyclic AMP and result in more insulin production. Alpha-2 adrenergic receptors are more on beta cell than beta-2 adrenergic receptors. So combine them and we have less insulin production. Somatostatins secreted by delta cells inhibits all the hormones. Now by phase release of insulin. After we eat food, within 3 minutes we see the insulin start to rise in the blood and reaches at its peak in around 5 minutes then it will start declining and then it will go high again and stay high for some time and then goes down. First burst for the old insulin already stored and the second burst for insulin is freshly made. C-peptide which is secreted in equimolar amount with insulin is long lived than insulin itself because 60% of insulin gets destroyed in liver and then in kidneys by insulinase enzyme. These enzymes break down disulfide bond between A and B peptide in active insulin. C-peptide is long-lived. 
and we can use it to find how much insulin we made. In type 1 diabetes, C-peptide level is very low because we made less insulin. In type 2 diabetes or insulinoma, C-peptide level is high because in both the conditions we had more insulin than we actually needed. But people who take exogenous insulin as injection will have low C-peptide because this insulin does not have C-peptide. C-peptide stimulates sodium potassium ATPase. C-peptide can stimulate endothelial cell to produce nitric oxide synthetase enzyme. Thus nitric oxide production will be more. Nitric oxide is a vasodilator and use it to relax nephropathy, retinopathy and neuropathy.